Ready to get started here. Game number two, a double hitter between the Thomas University Nighthawks and Trinity Baptist College Eagles. And the first pitch of the game is high. This is Jacob Burke leading off for Trinity Baptist, and he'll, he'll be batting against Nick Brady, who gets a start for the Nighthawks in game number two. He'll be pitching to Braden Lawhon. And the second pitch is outside 2 0 now. Matt Williams over at third base. Seth Waltemeyer at short, Turner Maddox at second. Cam Tyson will be the first baseman. The outfield will be Max Pickard in left. Eli Garcia, and there's a pitch that's ruled a ball low, a little bit low. Uh, Eli Garcia's in center field and Casey Bowie over in right field. So 3-0 count to start the game number two to Jacob Burke. As that pitch is in there for a strike, so good fastball to come back get back in the count uh, against Jacob Burke. The center fielder for Trinity Baptist was two for four in game number one, a couple of singles. And the 3-0 is fouled off to the right side. Now the count runs full. It'll be Jacob Burke leading off playing center field, followed by Dominic Gattinella, the left fielder, and then Gavin Williams, the DH, will bat third. So the full count is swung on and missed, strike three. So nice job by Brady to come back after opening with a 3-0 count to strike out Jacob Burke. And so there's one out here, and it'll be Dominic Gattinella. So Gattinella bats second, then Williams. David Hickey will be the first baseman batting fourth. Jordan Fernandez, right fielder, bats fifth. And then third baseman will be Colin Sepulveda as the first pitch is out. Called a strike on the outside corner. That was a generous call there. Uh, Sepulveda plays third, bat six. Jack, Jack Musgrave will be behind the dish for the Eagles and bat seventh is the 0-1. That would look like a better pitch there, rule the ball. So everything evens out here for Gattinella. Reeves starts again at second base. He'll bat eighth and McGann, the shortstop, bats ninth. That ball's fouled out of play. A ball and two strikes. To Dominic Gattinella. The one two is foul back. Let's stay at one and two. And that ball's hit in the air to right field. Bowie is under it, and he'll make the grab for out number two. So two outs for Gavin Williams. The DH for Trinity. He was also the DH in game one, went one for three with a walk. The first pitch to Gavin Williams is high, ball one. Here's a swing and a miss, so the one ball, one strike now, the count. To Gavin Williams. There's a pitch ruled a ball. That looked pretty good here. Must have been a little high. 2-1. Nice off-speed off pitch there. Change up. Stayed, a little, stayed high according to the umpire. Two balls and one strike. And that one's in the dirt. 3-1 now. Three balls, one strike. We're just getting started in game number two. That ball's hit on the ground to shortstop Waltemeyer. He makes the play and fires over to Tyson to retire the side. One, two, three inning for the Nighthawks. So we played a half inning. Your score, Trinity Baptist, zero. Thomas University coming to bat. You're watching Nighthawks baseball on the Thomas University Broadcast Network.
Bottom of the first inning. Coming up is another seven inning game on tap. The Nighthawks won game one, five to one. For Trinity Baptist on the on the hill is Austin Bailey, freshman left-handed pitcher from Tallahassee. So for the Nighthawks, we have Nick Brady, pitcher from Lincoln High School in Tallahassee. And for Trinity Baptist, we have Austin Bailey, a pitcher from Leon High, Leon High School in Tallahassee. So rivals there, although Bailey's just a freshman and Nick Brady's a redshirt junior. So it'll be Bailey on the hill. He's pitching to Jack Musgrave, catching. It'll be Sep Sepulveda at third, McGann short, Reeves at second, and Hickey will be over at first base. Gattinella is in left, Burke in center, and Fernandez in right field. For Bailey, this is just his second appearance of the season. And he's pitched uh, one and two thirds innings in that one appearance. Allowed two runs, both earned, and five hits in that inning, an inning and two thirds. And he'll be facing Kaysen Bowie to lead things off for the Nighthawks. It'll be uh, Bowie, Lawhon, and Pickert due up for Thomas University here in the bottom of the first inning. And that pitch is on the inside corner, called a strike. And we'll have to. One ball, two strikes to Kaysen Bowie. Here's a curveball, and Bowie's able to fight that one off and out of play. One, two is high, two and two and two. It's a curve. It was a fastball there. That ball's hit down the line, third base line, fair. Extra bases for Bowie. He rounds first and will head to second. Here comes the throw, and Bowie slides in safely for a leadoff double. So that one was right over the bag of third. Sepulveda had no chance to get over and try to make a diving effort as it was hit sharply right over the bag and into the left field corner. Good job by Gatinella to get over there and actually cut it off before it got to the Fence out in left field and made it a little bit of a play at second, but uh, it was cut off by the shortstop McGann, and, and Bowie was in there safely with a leadoff double. And so now Braden Lawhon bats, the catcher for the Nighthawks, and the first pitch to him is inside. So for Lawhon batting 349 on the season. 63 plate official plate appearances is that's way inside ball two. That's 12 RBIs on the season, looking to pick up a 13th here with a base hit, but he's looking like he might walk with a 2-0 count. And that ball's hit on the ground right to the second baseman, Reeves, who throws over to first for the out on the play. Bowie moves over to third. Now batting number 14. Max Pickard. Max Pickard will bat. Pickard had a pretty good game one, two for two for three with a walk. Had a couple steal, stolen, or he had a stolen base and then a caught stealing actually. And a couple of RBIs for Pickard in game one. And he's got an opportunity to get an RBI here. They're playing a Regular depth up the middle, so if he just gets a ground ball to his short or second, that'll score a run. He'll have to th first and third are in, so we'll have to see what happens if a ground ball is hit to one of the corners. Of course, any fly ball deep enough in the outfield will score the game's first run as well. 2 0 count, and Picker does hit that one into the outfield in the air. Gattinello is going to make the play, but Picker will get an RBI sack fly here. And the Nighthawks take a one nothing lead. Now batting, number four, Cameron Tyson. Cam Tyson will bat. Nobody on now. 
and it's one one to zero in favor of the Nighthawks. Curveball is called a ball, looked pretty good, must have been high, so I think they are home plate umpire on the off speed pitches is not going to give them the high strike. There's a pitch. That one looked pretty good as well. Also ruled a ball. So 2 and 0 oh now. As also Baylor threw a couple of good pitches, both ruled balls. And that one is going to be outside, so 3 and 0. Oh. Bryce Bidding waits on deck for the Nighthawks to our DH in game 2. The 3-0 is, that's a strike on inside corner, 3-1. 3-1 is swung on and fouled into the Nighthawks' dugout, just missing Bryce Bidding there. He picks it up and tosses it to a teammate. Three balls and two strikes. The 3 2 is swung up foul. Back to the screen. Back stays a screen. Count. Stays at full count. Full count. High ball four. So Cam Tyson will be at first base with two outs, and Bryce Bidding will bat. Tyson, a perfect four for four on stolen bases on the year. As he might look early in the count to get in scoring position for Bryce Bidding. Bidding batting 292 with 12 RBIs, three home runs, and the first pitch is a curveball misses outside. 1 and 0. Oh. Matt Williams is on deck, and we'll see, we'll see if Cam Tyson. Looks a steal on the lefty here. Nope. And that's a strike down the middle. A ball and a strike. Bidding hits that foul and out of play. Must have hit the light pole and bounced back into play as third baseman Sepulveda fields that one in fair territory after it hit the pole and bounced back into play. Bidding hits that in the same place, but that's going to miss the foul pole or the light pole this time. And the count stays one and two. Bidding hits that one hard in the left field. Gattinella is going back, gets turned around, and still is able to make the play to retire the side. But the Nighthawks get a run on a one hit or two hits. No, I'll take that back. One run on one hit, no errors, one left on base. We played one complete. Your score, Thomas University 1, Trinity Baptist College 0. You're watching Nighthawks baseball on the Thomas University Broadcast Network.
All right, we go to the second inning. It'll be David Hickey, Jordan Fernandez, and Colin Sepulveda do up for Trinity Baptist against Nick Brady, who now pitching with a one to nothing lead after the Nighthawks clawed and scratched and scored a run in the bottom of the first. So Hickey did not play in game one. Gets a start at first base in game two. He looks like he might be their regular first baseman as the first pitch is called strike one. As Hickey actually leads the team in official at-bats as well as hits, doubles, home runs, and total bases. So definitely a rare for him to have the game off which he did in game one so but he's behind here no balls two strikes to lead off the second inning batting 330, 330 on the season is Hickey with a 505 slugging percentage 13 walks on the season as well so he's one of the offensive stars for the Eagles thus far this season and there's a good pitch there thought he had him but Umpire did not give it to him, and it's a ball and two strikes. So nice, nice pitch. Didn't get the call. One, two now. There's a swing and a foul tip that Lawhon's not able to control, and so it'll stay at one and two. Oh, and the 1-2 curveball doesn't curve and hits him in the back. So hit by pitch is the first base runner for the Eagles. As David Hickey looks to be okay as he jogs down to first base, and that will bring up Jordan Fernandez, the right fielder. Fernandez did play right field in the first game, was 0 for 4. Reached on an error. There's a fastball in there for strike one. On the season, Fernandez coming into the first game was batting 318. 88 official at bats. Leads the team in RBIs with 17. There's a swing and a miss, strike two. So Brady gets ahead of. Jordan Fernandez, as he did David Hickey, lost Hickey on a hit on a curveball that hit him. We'll see what he can do ahead of Fernandez, and that's a ways to pitch outside one and two now. After Fernandez, Colin Sepulveda, the third, third baseman, gets his first at bat of the doubleheader. And the one two is. That's been a little bit high, so hopefully the umpire is not going to give the high strike. That one looked pretty good to me, and he's called a couple of other ones that were about the same area, about maybe around the stomach area. There's a ground ball to the left side and foul, and he's a, he's not uh, giving the high strike to either pitcher. Two balls, two strikes, nobody out. We're in the top of the second. Trinity Baptist has a runner at first, and there's a two-ball, two-strike count on Justin Fernandez. And that is – that one's called a ball, and I'm not sure whether that one missed either. So a couple of pitches here that I thought he had struck him out looking, both called balls, and now it's a full count. And so we'll see what happens here with nobody out. And there – is another one that's close but a little bit outside. That was that one was probably a ball, but the two prior to that looked pretty good. And so now the Trinity Baptist has runners at first and second, nobody out, and it'll be Colin Sepulveda. So Nick's gotten ahead of both batters in this inning. O two in each case. And then both were later issued free passes. Hickey on a hit by pitch and Fernandez on a walk. 
So there's a square to bunt, and that's going to be bunted foul. Strike one to Sepulveda. As I see a little bit of activity in the Thomas bullpen, some stretching going on there. We'll see if they're going to try to bunt here with no balls, one strike. First and second, they do square to bunt, and that is called a strike. So that one's ruled a strike, though. It, I could probably count about three that were ruled balls that were better pitches than that one. That one looked a little bit up and away. So the home plate umpire will work on his consistency, and pitchers will try to figure it out. It's no balls, two strikes now to Sepulveda. And there's a, cur a slider in that. That one looked pretty good, too, ruled a ball. So good slider. Sepulveda didn't chase it, and it was ruled a ball. There's a ball hit hard, and that's going to be in the gap in right center field. Over to get it is Garcia, and he gets the ball in. On a 1-2 pitch, Sepulveda drills one into right field for a single and an RBI. Now there's runners at first and third with still nobody out. And we'll see how the Trinity Baptist plays this situation. With Sepulveda at first and Fernandez at third. And the catcher Musgrave is batting. And that ball gets away from the catcher. The runner at third is not able to come home, but Sepulveda is able to advance to second base. So now they're second and third. And Brady's in a jam here with nobody out. Here's a good pitch called strike one. Seth Reeves, the on-deck batter, and then it'll be Logan McGann. One-one is called strike two. So now the four batters in this inning have all had two strikes on them. And I think all four had a one ball, two strike count. And the previous three have reached base. We'll see what happens with Musgrave. And there's called strike three. So a good pitch there. And he's given the call that time. And now there's one out in the inning. Seth Reeves, the Eagles second baseman, bat from the left side. We're just in the top of the second. The Nighthawks are playing this straight up on defense, willing to concede the run on a ground ball. The first pitch is hit on the ground, and that's going to be – the play is not made by Maddox. He's able to recover and make the throw home, and the tag is made at home. So great job by Maddox to recover. The ball kicked off his, the heel of his glove as he drifted over to make the play. It didn't get too far away from him, and then they, the Eagles tried to score the second run. They did One run did come in on the ground ball. The second run tried to score and was thrown out by Maddox to Lawhon. Great play by Lawhon because it was a one-hopper. He had to scoop the ball and make the tag, which he did, and that's the second out of the inning. So two outs here, but the Trinity does take the lead, and there's a slider in there for strike one. To Logan McGann, the shortstop. So Rees is down at first base. I, I believe that's going to be uh, probably a hit. I'm not sure. I'll have to check the score on that. Either maybe a fielder's choice. He's at first base. Run score. So 
Reeves will get the RBI. And then the second runner, Sepulveda, is tagged out at home on a good play. Their ball's a good hit and run by Trinity Baptist, and that ball's hit into right field into the vacated second baseman spot. So hit and run executed to perfection by Trinity Baptist, and there's first and third, two outs, though, and we go back to the top of the order, Jacob Burke. So we'll see if there's a ball in the dirt. So Hickey was hit by a pitch and Fernandez walk. Sepulveda definitely gets a single. We'll see about Reeves and then McGann single. So either two hits or three hits for Trinity Baptist so far in this inning. Two runs are in. And a one ball, no strike count. And that ball's going to get put past the catcher. On a wild pitch, and a run, another run's going to score. So three to one is a new score. And on the wild pitch, McGann advances a second. Still two outs here. But now there are two balls and no strikes. There's pitched it a little bit low, 3-0 and oh now. And that's low and outside, ball four. And there's activity in the, in the Thomas bullpen. We'll see what Coach Gonzalez and Coach Fleener do here with first and seconds, and Dominic Gatinella due up. And here comes Coach Gonzalez. And that could signal the end of the day for Nick Brady. And it will. So we're going to have a new pitcher coming in for the Nighthawks. Uh, the Trinity Baptist 3, Thomas 1. You're watching Nighthawks Baseball on the Thomas University Broadcast Network. So the new pitcher for the Nighthawks is Gavin Steptoe coming in to relive, relieve Nick Brady. Steptoe is making his 16th appearance on the season, 25 and two-thirds innings pitched. Opponents batting 277 against the left-handed pitcher on the season. He's a 5'10 junior from Moultrie, Georgia, out of Colquitt High School by way of Andrew College. Steptoe comes in here with two outs, and there's a good curveball for a strike, so it's a ball and one strike now to Gat Gatinella.
There's a fastball that misses inside, two and one. That pitch misses three, three one. 20 strikeouts for Steptoe in his 25 and two thirds inning. And he comes in here. That ball's hit hard, but it's going to be foul and into the bullpen for TBC. So it's a full count now to Gatinella, who's in relief of Nick Brady, who pitched a perfect first inning, three up, three down, and then couldn't get the knockout punch here in the second inning. Had two strikes on just about everybody. Nice pitch by Gavin Steto to strike out Gatinella and end the threat. Trinity Baptist scores three and takes the lead three to one. You're watching Nighthawks baseball on the Thomas University Broadcast Network. So we go to the bottom of the second, and for the first time, the Nighthawks find themselves trailing. It's three to one. So for Nick Brady, one and two-thirds innings pitched and closed the book on him. Two hits allowed, two walks, two strikeouts, but three runs all earned. Gavin Stepto comes in and gets the big strikeout to end the threat and keep it a two-run ball game and see if the Nighthawks can respond here in the bottom of the second. It'll be Matt Williams, Turner Maddox, and Eli Garcia due up against Austin Bailey, the lefty, and the first pitch from Bailey is in the dirt, ball one. And that's a little outside, two and oh. Fastball misses up and away, and Matt Williams is ahead. Three balls, no strikes. And there's a fastball right down the middle. Nighthawks won game one, five to one, to secure the season series win over TBC as that fastball is outside and Austin Bailey's shaking his head as he walks Matt Williams, who also went to Leon High School, so a couple of Leon Lions facing each other just now. And the pitcher, Leon Lyon, Lyon walks the hitter. So Matt Williams is at first base. And a good start to the second inning for the Nighthawks. It's Turner Maddox bats, and the fastball is taken for a strike one. There's a move over to first, back safe as Williams. Williams hasn't attempted a stolen base this year. And he's been on base plenty, 20, 20 hits, five walks, and a hit by pitch. But no attempted steals. So it's a ball and a strike now to Turner Maddox. And then it'll be Eli Garcia and Seth, Seth Waltemeyer. 
There's a ball that's foul. And the Nighthawks don't realize it's foul, so they're running the bases. But the umpire's calling it back as it was ruled a foul ball. And so it'll be a one ball, two strikes to Turner Maddox. And there's some grumbling from the crowd who might have had a better angle. But now Coach Fleener's out there asking about it. And it was right down the line on the third base side. And uh, just a matter of because the ball was fielded in the air. So it was a matter of the umpire's judgment if it was in the air to the left or the right side of the foul line. And he ruled it to the left side. Otherwise, that would have been a big play for the Nighthawks as that ball went into right field. And instead, it's a ball and two strikes. And that ball's hit in the air to center. In comes Burke, a long run. He's going to drop in front of him. And Matt Williams is going to get to second base. So a single by Turner Maddox. And it took a bad bounce for Burke. Otherwise, he might have had a play at second base as Matt Williams had to hold up to see if he was going to be able to catch that ball. At the last second, Burke held up. And it dropped in front of him. If he feels it cleanly, he might have a quick throw to second to get Matt Williams out on a force out. But instead, it kind of kicks away from him a little bit and everyone's safe. So first and second, nobody out. And Eli Garcia may be in a bunt situation here. And he is squaring the bunt, and he bunts it foul. So the Nighthawks are playing to get the tying run in scoring position, position here in the bottom of the second inning. Be Garcia and then Seth Waltemeyer. For Waltemeyer. And that bunt is laid down beautifully by Garcia. And there's no play to be made by Austin Bailey. So Eli Garcia lays down the perfect sack bunt. That'll be goes down as a single. And Walt Waltemeyer. Will make his first plate appearance of the season, it looks like, unless I'm missing something. I know he played some on defense in an earlier game. That was a home game. He's a freshman from Palaka, Florida. And what a spot for his first at-bat of the season. And he hits a base hit to the right side. On the very first pitch he saw all season long, he drills into right field and gets the RBI. Driving in Matt Williams. And so now the Nighthawks have something going here. Still nobody out. And the top of the order is due up. I'm trying to think back. It was a game when uh, I believe it was when Riley Borgert got injured on a play. And Walter Meyer had to come in the game and play shortstop. And I think on the very first pitch, as that ball's hit foul down the – Left field line, the first pitch, the batter hit a a shot right at him. So you you, you come in the game on, for defensive uh, to replace an injured player, and the very first batter hits one right at you in a tough play, and he made it. And then here, in his first at-bat of the season, the first pitch, he rips it into right field for an RBI single. So now I don't even have to look. He leads the team in batting average at 1,000. And there's a pitch that just misses to Bowie. Not my much. The umpire, so far as a hitter's umpire, from what I can tell, is he's called a few close ones in favor of the batter. That ball's hit in the air. I don't know if it's going to be deep enough. It doesn't look like it will be. Maddox is standing on the bag, and now he goes. Now he, he's going to have to stay there. So a fly ball to center field by Bowie, not deep enough to score a run. And so they're one out. And Lawhon is the batter. So Nighthawks got it to three to two right now. Trying to even up the game and maybe more if they can. That pitch is way outside. Matt Williams walked to start this inning and then three hits in a row. Turner Maddox, Eli Garcia, and Seth Waltemeyer. 
And that ball's hit in the air, and this one is going to be close too. It looks like Maddox is going to tag on this one and test the arm of Burke. Here he comes. Here comes the throw to the plate. Maddox is safe, but on the play, we're going to have an out at third. So Eli Garcia tried to tag up and go from second to third, and he's going to be retired. But the run does score, and that is Maddox safely at home, and that evens up the game three to three. We played two complete innings. Your score is tied three to three. You're watching Nighthawks baseball on the Thomas University Broadcast Network. So we got a brand new ball game here, top of the third, three to three. Three hits, or three runs on four hits for the Nighthawks. Three runs on two hits for Trinity Baptist. And for the Eagles, it'll be the three, four, five hitters due up here in the top of the third. Gavin Williams, David Hickey, and Jordan Fernandez. They'll be facing left-handed Gavin Steptoe. He was able to get the last out of the top of the second inning in relief of Nick Brady on a strikeout. And he starts Gavin Williams off with a strike here. There's a ground ball to shortstop Waltemeyer who makes the play cleanly, throws over to first to retire Gavin Williams. Now the first baseman, David Hickey, who was hit by a pitch to lead off the second inning. And he hits that one into right field in the bullpen for strike one. No balls, one strike. And there's a ball outside, one and one. Fastball ruled outside. Again, another case could have call could have gone either way, ruled a ball again. The two one is swung on and missed. Two and two. Full count now to the Eagles' first baseman. And there's a call strike three. This time he gets the call. And down goes David Hickey for the second out of the inning. Nice pitch by Gavin Steptoe on the outside corner. Two outs for Jordan Fernandez. Fernandez hits that in the air. That's going to reach the bullpen again. And it 
bounces off the bullpen mound for strike number one. So the lights come on here at Barnado Stadium and the second game of our doubleheader. Nighthawks won game one, five to one. Fastball's outside. Good curveball there, strike two. One, two, fastballs hit to third. Williams is up with it, makes the throw to first to retire the side. So the Eagles go down in order in inning number three, the top of the third. We'll go to the bottom half. Your score is tied 3-3. Three to three. You watch Nighthawks Baseball on the Thomas University Broadcast Network. last weekend. We go to the bottom of the third inning. Be Max Pickert, Cam Tyson, and Bryce Bidding due up for Thomas University against left-handed pitcher Austin Bailey. So Pickert hit the sack fly to collect the RBI in the bottom of the first inning. This is after Case and Bowie led the game off with a double, and then advanced on a ground out by Lawhon, and then Pickard hit a sack fly to score him. That gave the Nighthawks the early one to nothing lead. Eagles responded in top of the second with three runs. And then in the bottom of the second, Nighthawks evened it up at 3-3. Three to three. And here we are in the bottom of the third. As Pickard leads off with a sharp single to right field. And he's at first base to lead things off. So for the Nighthawks, again, all three innings, the leadoff man has gotten on base. That's something they've done all this whole evening. Both games are doubleheader. They've been able to get the leadoff man on base consistently. In this game, Bowie hit the leadoff double in the first. In the second, Matt Williams drew a walk to lead it off. He scored. Both runs. Both of those runs scored. And then here, Max Pickard leads off with a single to right. And that'll bring up Cam Tyson, who takes a pitch high. There's a quick throw to first. Pickard is back safely. So for Pickard, it was 9 of 10 on stolen bases coming into tonight. And I think tonight he's, there's a pitch that looked pretty good, ruled the ball 2 0. Um, for Pickard tonight, is has one stolen base and one caught stealing. So now he's 10 for 11. As that pitch is hit high in the air over towards the Thomas dugout, and it's going to Bounce over the dugout in foul territory. So two balls and a strike now to Cam Tyson. Two one is a little bit low. Three one. Yeah. 
There's a pitch, and that's called a ball. And it looked like to me that the umpire was about to call it a strike, and then Cam Tyson started running to first, and he changed his mind and let him continue to first base. So it's a walk for Cam Tyson. That moves Max Pickard over to second, and Bryce Bidding bats. So we'll see how the Nighthawks play this with Bryce Bidding. This is typically a bump situation for Coach Fleenor. We'll see if he does it. And yes, he does square to bunt, and he takes a ball outside. And that time, Bailey's looking in there, shaking his head, but that was definitely a ball. Some of these maybe should have been called a strike, but that one was definitely a ball. And Bidding bumps that in the air, and it's going to fall safely, and there's a play to third that is made. So Pickard had to hold up because the ball was bunted in the air. He had to stay near second base. When he realized it was going to fall, he tried to get to third. And the only play that Austin Bailey had was to third. And they're going to force out Max Pickard. So the bunt, sack bunt fails that time. As Pickard is retired, one to five on the play. Still runners at first and second. Now it's Matt Williams who hits one in the air, and that's going to be caught out in left field by Gantanella, who started back on the ball as it looked like it was coming off the bat pretty well. So Gantanella started going back, and then he had to sprint back in to make the catch, and he did to retire Matt Williams on a flyout. So now... After being first and second with nobody out, we still have first and second, but there are two outs. And Turner Maddox is the batter, and he takes the first pitch outside. So Tyson, who walked, is down at second base. And Bidding, who hit into the fielder's choice, is at first base. Bunted into the fielder's choice, I should say. And there's a pitch way inside. Nearly hits Maddox, ball two. Garcia, who laid down the sack bunt, but got on base on a single, is in the on-deck circle. And Maddox hits that one foul to the right side. As the Nighthawks hit three singles in a row back in the second inning. To even the game. And now they're trying to inch ahead. And it looked pretty good at the beginning of this inning with the first two batters getting on base. For Bryce Bidding, who hasn't, is not used to sack bunting, popped one in the air. And that allowed the lead runner to be out at third base. And then a pop out or fly out to left field by Matt Williams. And so there are two outs and no runs in yet here in the bottom of the third inning. So full count. That ball's hit hard in the right, but right to Fernandez. Who makes the catch? So Maddox got all of it, and but right, unfortunately, right to the right fielder, and that'll end the inning. So no runs for the Nighthawks. We played three complete. Your score remains: Thomas three, Trinity Baptist three. You're watching Nighthawks baseball on the Thomas University Broadcast Network.
walk. We go to the fourth inning. Due up for Trinity Baptist. Colin Sepulveda, Jack Musgrave, and Seth Reeves. The first pitch is fouled, fouled off. No balls, one strike. Gavin Stepto. To this point, it's faced four batters, retired them all, two by strikeout. is hitting the center field. Garcia should have an easy play, and he does. One out. Jack Musgrave, the catcher, will bat. First pitch is a fastball high, ball one. There's a ground ball to Walter Myers, not able to glove it. And so that looks like it'll be a base hit for Jack Musgrave. As Walter Myers got there, tried to backhand it. Would have been a hard play to get him out anyways. And the cursey runner for Trinity Baptist is going to be number 10, Laffrey, Parker Laffrey, the senior infielder from Winter Springs, Florida, will be the runner at first for the catcher Musgrave. Seth Reeves, the number eight hole hitter, will bat. There's a good curveball by Steptoe strike one. McGann is on deck. Here's a ground ball, soft roller, fielded by Walter Meyer, and he makes the throw to first. Good play there. Had no chance to get the courtesy runner Laffrey advancing the second, so he made the smart play and, and got the sure out at first. So Reeves is retired 6-3 to three on the play. Musgrave advances to second. And now with two outs, Logan McGann, the shortstop for the Eagles bats. The first pitch is a good one, but ruled a ball. That ball's hit to Walter Meyer again, who has to field the ball between the legs of the runner, advancing from second to third. Does field it without being distracted. Throws over to first for the out, and that retires the side. So the Eagles scored no runs on one hit. No errors, one left on base. We played three and a half. Your score remains Thomas three, Trinity Baptist three. You're watching Nighthawks baseball on the Thomas University Broadcast Network.
bottom of the fourth in a tie ball game, three to three. It'll be Eli Garcia, Seth Waltermeyer, and Kaysen Bowie due up for the Nighthawks. As the last midweek game of the season for the Nighthawks. We'll play this weekend against the University of Mobile to close out the regular season. And things are going to have to go well over the next couple of weekends for Thomas to make travel plans for postseason. First pitches misses for a ball, so the Nighthawks are in a battle for that eighth spot. And there are four teams fighting for two spots, really. There's a fly ball in the right field. Long run for Fernandez. He's not going to be able to get there, but it lands in foul territory. So it's a 1-1 count. So four, pretty much four teams battling for two spots as Stillman College at a 5-22 and 22 conference record will not make the playoffs or the conference tournament, I should say. But UT Southern, Blue Mountain Christian, Bruton Parker, and Thomas University, two of those four will make it and two of those four will not make it. And so crucial games this weekend here at Varnado Stadium against the University of Mobile. They are comfortably in with a 14-10 and 10 record. That pitches inside. Faulkner leads the way at a, with a 19-5 and five record. And Thomas University played them tough, played them tough two weekends ago. Two weekends ago. Weekend before last. In fact, had big leads in two of the games and let them slip away. Thomas have to get into, somehow get into the conference tournament. There's a pitch called strike, full count now. I feel like if they can get into the conference tournament, they got just as good a shot as anybody. As they, again, William Carey is in, tied for second with Loyola. And there's called strike three. So Garcia goes down looking. And that'll bring up Seth Waltemeyer. Now batting, number 44, Seth. The Nighthawks battled against William Carey as well. Though he dropped those games. So they, Thomas gets competitive with any of these teams in the conference. So if we can just get in, find a way into that conference tournament, you roll the dice and see if you can see if you can advance out of that conference tournament. But they lost three close games to Faulkner. And then drop two out of three to UT Southern, and that's that one hurt because UT Southern was right there in the mix for that eighth and final spot. And if losing losing two out of three to them hurt, help their chances, hurt our chances. But we'll just have to uh, turn it back around this weekend and see if we can pick up some conference wins. We're ten and seventeen. That's a Waltemeyer is way ahead here, three and zero. Oh. So ten wins for Thomas in the conference. If we could find a way to win a couple this weekend, maybe three, but we'll just say two. That'll be twelve wins. There's a pitch outside. Waltemeyer draws a walk, and he's down at first base for the top of the order. If we can somehow get to twelve wins. Then you got Bruton Parker, who's currently at nine. Blue Mountain Christian currently at nine. Both of those teams have six games remaining, and they would have to win four of those six to advance past Thomas if we were able to get two this weekend. Because I believe we hold the head-to-head -head against we've won the series against both of those teams, Blue Mountain Christian and Bruton Parker. If we could win three games this weekend, which I was asking a lot against a pretty good mo Mobile team, that would be 13 wins in those two teams would have to win five out of their last six games. Again, I don't know the time. Oh, there's a sure. Oh, nice play by Sepulveda. Bowie just smoked it into 
left field. Sepulveda stabbed at it and made the grab. Otherwise, that would have been second and third for the Nighthawks. He that was a sure double because there was no way Gatinella was getting over and cutting that ball off. It was smoked. Tough break for Bowie and the Nighthawks, but good play over a third by Sepulveda to get the second out of the inning. It's Lawhon bats now with two outs. Waltemeyer at first base. And that pitch is a little bit low, ball one. And so Waltemeyer for the Nighthawks, two plate appearances. Actually, this one won't count as an official plate appearance. It's a walk. Here's a ground ball to third. Tough play. And Sepulveda is able to make it. So he scooped at it. The ball flipped up in the air. He almost like he flipped it to himself, caught it and threw over to first to retire Braden Lawhon and the, and the Nighthawks. So the Nighthawks get a runner on, leave him stranded. We played four complete. The score remains three to three. You're watching Nighthawks baseball on the Thomas University Broadcast Network. All right, fifth inning here at Varnado Stadium, which means the last three innings as we're playing a seven-inning doubleheader. Both games to go seven innings. Nighthawks won game one, five to one, to secure the ser uh, season series win as they also won two in Jacksonville earlier this season. So trying for the sweep, TVC, but we've got some work to do. It's three to three. As we go into the final three innings. And for the Eagles, we'll be back to the top of the order. Jacob Burke, Dominic Gattinella, and Gavin Williams are due up. And the first pitch is fouled back to the screen. For Jacob Burke, who's struck out in the first inning and then walked in the second inning. There's a nice pitch by Steptoe to get ahead 0-2. Swing and a miss. Three-pitch strikeout from Gavin Steptoe, and that will bring up Dominic Gattinella. I was just taking a look and see the opponents for Blue Mountain Christian. Is there one of the teams we'd be rooting against this weekend? They play at William Carey this weekend, and then the last weekend they play home against UT Southern. A swing and a miss from Dominic Gattinella. There's a ball outside, and got stepped over, lost his balance as he threw that pitch. So Blue Mountain Christian. Plays William Carey and UT Southern. Bruton Parker, also a team with nine wins at this point. That ball's hit in the air to the right side. Going to be a <laughs> tough play for somebody. Can they get a yes? Casey Bowie is able to get there and make the catch for out number two. Bruton Parker, the other team with nine wins, conference wins, plays at Point University and then home against Middle Georgia State.
And UT Southern with 10 wins. We've already seen that they'll, there's a pitch called a ball. We already see that they play Blue Mountain Christian to end the season, but they also play Loyola this weekend coming up. Most of the teams in the southern states have already played, have only played 24 games. The exceptions are Thomas and Stillman who've played 27 games as they had to move a series up. There's the ball hit hard in the center. Long run by Garcia. He's not able to catch it all the way to the fence. And so that's going to be a double. And, Gar and Williams is going to try to take third. Here comes the throw in from short to third. Not in time. So a triple from Gavin Williams. And he'll be at third base. And he represents the go-ahead run for the Eagles. That ball was well hit. Gar Garcia took an angle to try to catch the ball. And wasn't able to quite get there as he was having to go back on it a little bit too. And then it goes all the way to the fence, and that allows Williams to get a triple. Nice pitch by step toe rule to ball outside. So the go-ahead run is at third base, two outs in the fifth, and that's a fastball outside, 2-0. and oh. Jordan Fernandez is on deck. The Nighthawks hoping that he'll bat to lead off the sixth inning. Here's a off-speed pitch that stays outside, 3-0. and oh. Does look like the Nighthawks do have some activity in the bullpen. I can't see who that is. And a fastball is way outside. So a four pitch walk to David Hickey. And that brings up Justin Fernandez. And here comes Coach Fernandez to have a talk with Gavin Steptoe. Uh, looks like a right-hander warming up for the Nighthawks, but not sure if Coach Gonzalez is going to make the move here. As step step toes thrown pretty well since he came in in the second inning, and he'll stay in for this batter at least. Struck out the batter he faced in to end the second inning, then retired the Eagles 1-2-3 in the third inning. The fourth inning, he allowed a hit, but was able to get out of it with no trouble as we're going to have a pinch runner here is number 32. Jeffrey Vivian, the freshman from Punta Gorda, will run at first for David Hickey. So Steptoe allowed only one base runner through seven outs. And then you can actually, there's a, here goes the runner, a fake throw, and they're going to try to get the entice pickle, but it, the Thomas doesn't bite. So that, I think that's probably going to be ruled a catcher's indifference. We'll see. We'll see. I don't know if he gets credit for a stolen base when he didn't even really want to steal the base. He wanted to get into a rundown. But Thomas just threw the ball back to the pitcher, and we'll try to get the batter out. And there's a swing and a miss for strike two to Fernandez. And there's a check swing. And they're going to say he did go around. That's a big play by Lawhon. That is a huge play to get the outer runner out at first base. Wow, so the third strike, does not, the runner does not count. The third strike bounced off a of Lawhon off to the right side, and it was ruled swinging strike, so he went around. Umpire made that clear. It was a good job by the umpire to make that known that it was a strikeout. So Lawhon ran off to the side, fielded the ball, 
and threw out the runner at first. Otherwise, the run scores to, to give Trinity Baptist a lead. But uh, great play by Lawhon to keep them at three. We'll go to the bottom of the fifth with your score all even, three to three. You're watching Nighthawks Baseball on the Thomas University Broadcast Network. So, what a play by catcher Braden Lawhon after the strikeout. Good pitch by, I should give credit to Gavin Stepto for the, for the good pitch to retire the batter chasing. And the pitch bounced off of Lawhon over towards the first base side, and he was able to run over there, hustle while the runner was trying to get to first base on the drop third strike. And on through him out. And here's the first pitch swing by Max Pickard. And it's going to be flying out to left field to Gatinella for the first out of the sixth inning. Or, no, sorry, fifth inning. Bottom of the fifth inning in a seven inning ball game. So setting up the defense. Looks like it's still Jack Musgrave catching number 20. Tyson takes the first pitch for a strike. Sepulveda is at third. McGann at short. Reeves at second. And I believe David Hickey re entered the game at first. Got Nellas in left. Burke in center. And Fernandez in right. One ball, one strike to Cam Tyson, who. Walked both times in this game, and now he's two and one. And it's now three and one. Bryce Bidding will bat next, and he'll be followed by Matt Williams as the Nighthawks. Try to build off the momentum that ended the top of the fifth inning. And there's a walk. So Tyson is on base via the walk for the third time in this game. Now and he'll be there with one out for Bryce Bidding. Tyson is four for four on stolen bases. And here comes the coach for the Eagles out. And I think. We'll see if he's going to make a move. Austin Bailey allowed one run in the first and two in the second, but this held the, held the Nighthawks score in the third and fourth and third and fourth. He will be relieved. Bobby, you pitch for the Eagles. We'll, 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 we'll check on him in, 30, in 90 seconds. We're watching Nighthawks baseball on the Thomas University Broadcast Network.
The U pitcher for Trinity Baptist College is Michael Cardenas, sophomore left-handed pitcher from Jacksonville, Florida, First Coast Christian School. Enters the game here in the bottom of the fifth with one out and a runner at first base. Cardenas making his seventh appearance on the season. Has five starts, so this is only his second relief appearance. 24 innings pitched, 16 strikeouts. No, check that, 28 strikeouts. So 28 strikeouts and 24 innings pitched, 16 walks. Uh, whip of 1.88 and ERA of 3.75. Has a two and two record. Bryce Bidding, the left-handed batter, stands in. And the first pitch is in the dirt and outside, 1-0. and oh. bidding, bidding is over 2. As he tried to sack bunt in the third and was unsuccessful. And flew out to the left fielder in the first. Matt Williams is on deck, should, with one out, there's a quick move over to first. Throw was low, but Hickey was able to grab it. As we're just in the seven inning game, bottom of the fifth is late. So the Nighthawks will try to turn a one out walk into a go ahead run. So I do see a right handed pitcher warming up in for Trinity. Trinity Baptist, I believe the Nighthawks have somebody ready to go as well. Two balls and two strikes to Bryce Bidding. Bottom of the fifth in a three to three game. There's a nice curveball there, strike three called. So Bidding goes down looking and that'll bring up Matt Williams. Matt Williams is the batter, walked to lead off the second, scored one of, one of the three runs for the Nighthawks in this game. It's a fastball is low, ball one. Third inning, Williams flew out to left fielder. That's in the dirt, two and oh. If he can get on base, Turner Maddox waits on deck. That pitch is outside, 3-0. and oh. Three zero strike called on the outside corner. Three one. There goes the runner. Pitch is taken for a strike, and Tyson is going to be safe at second on a stolen base. So full count now, Matt Williams, but the runner is in scoring position. And that would be the go-ahead runner for the Nighthawks if they could if they could score it. We'll see what Matt Williams can do here with a full count. As Cardenas steps off the back of the mound and he'll ask for a new baseball. Three two hit on the ground to the right side, fielded by Hickey, and he'll make the play himself at first to retire the side. 
So the Nighthawks get a runner in scoring position but failed to bring him in. We played five complete. Your score remains three to three. You're watching Nighthawks baseball on the Thomas University Broadcast Network. New pitcher for the Nighthawks is Sam Odie Horn. Right-handed pitcher from right nearby Madison, Florida, sophomore. After attending Faulkner, his freshman year comes over to Thomas here for his sophomore year. And Odie Horn is making his eighth appearance on the season. Most in relief, has one start, pitched 10 complete innings, has 14 strikeouts, opponents batting 237. ERA 2.7 and whip of 1.6, two and one record. As his goal here is to hold Trinity Baptist to no runs here in the six and should the Nighthawks find their way into the lead, he could pick up his third win of the season. Let's hope that happens. He'll be facing the six, seven, eight hitters for the Eagles, Colin Sepulveda, Jack Musgrave, and Seth Reeves. Defense is the same for the Nighthawks. Brandon Lawhon catching, Matt Williams third, Seth Waltemeyer at short, Turner Maddox at second, and Camp Tyson at first, as the first pitch from Odie Orn is in the dirt. Max Pickard is in left field. Eli Garcia in center and Kaysen Bowie in right. There's a big swing and a miss. One and one. All the runs for Trinity Baptist came in the second inning. I'll charge to starting pitcher Nick Brady. There's a fastball in the outside corner, strike two. The Nighthawks scored a single run in the first, took a brief one to nothing lead. And then after Trinity scored three, there's a swing and a miss. Good pitch by Odie Orn to retire Sepulveda. So after the Trinity had scored three in the top of the second to take the three to one lead, the Nighthawks responded, evened it up in the bottom of the second. And then neither team has scored in the third, fourth, or fifth innings. And so we go to the six and a 3-3 ball game. There's a fastball in there for a strike to Musgrave. Thomas is out hit. Trinity Baptist 5-4 to four as that pitch misses low. And neither team has committed an error in this game. The 1-1 one, one is a big swing and a miss. Strike two. As Musgrave helps out Odie Orn on that pitch. The 1-2 fastball. Not called a strike, it was close. 
Musgrave didn't offer at it, and it was ruled a ball. And we've seen that a few times. Close to a few pitches that could have been called strike three have been let go. There's a – he's going to say he swung at that one. So another strikeout swinging two in a row dealt by Sam Odeorn to start at the top of the six. And that will bring up the second baseman, Seth Reeves. First pitch to Reeves is looked pretty good. Ruled a ball. Reeves reached on a fielder's choice and scored a run. Actually, his fielder's choice was probably the most interesting play of the game. And there's another close pitch. Ruled a ball as he had a ground ball to second baseman Maddox, who got to the ball, but it kind of kicked off the heel of his glove. It went out a few. Feet into right or into center field, and there's a ball that's 3 0 now. It kind of bounced off the heel of Maddox's glove and towards the center fielder. On the play, a run, they were second and third. One, the runner from third scored easily. The runner from second tried to score, and Maddox was able to recover. There's a four pitch walk issued to the number eight hole hitter, Reeves. Maddox was able to recover and throw out Sepulveda trying to. Score another run. So credit to Turner Maddox on that play. So with two outs, Reeves reaches on a walk, and now it's number nine hole hitter Logan again. There's a quick throw to first. Close play, ruled safe. So had him lean in just a little bit as Trinity's probably eager to try to get a lead here in this game, regain the lead. And we'll see if uh, what Reeves has done in the stolen base department. Let's see. The fastball misses high, and so that's five straight for Odie Orn that have missed. But Reeves is, uh, has, does have five stolen bases on the season, so he is a threat over there as there's another ball. He has been caught three times, so... Out of eight attempts, he's been successful five. But he won't be going here 2-0, and and Coach Gonzalez is going to come out and have a chat with Sam Odeorn, who started off the inning very well, struck out the first two batters, in fact. And then walked Reeves on four pitches, and it started off McGann with two balls here. So Coach Gonzalez is going to just try to settle him down. See if he can get his work his way out of the inning. There is some activity in the Thomas bullpen, but I can't. The bench is blocking my view on seeing who what the number is. As McGann stands back in, and I'm sure he'll have the take sign here. Uh, just a matter of if Sam Odie Orange is going to be able to throw a strike. And it looked like he might have, but it was ruled a ball. Maybe a little bit high. So now it's 3-0. and oh. And he'll certainly be taking this one as well. There's a fastball in there for a strike. 3-1. Three one swung on and missed three two and now the orange battling back against McGann. We'll save the top of the order for the next inning if we can. Three two two outs. Runner will be going. Here's the pitch and that hit to Camp Tyson who makes a good play over there. Touches first base and the inning is over. So nice job by Tyson to go near the line and grab that ball and take it himself. And good job by Odie Orn for battling back after walking one and getting 3-0 on the next to be able to work his way back and get the, the, the out. And we go to the bottom of the six. Bottom of the six. Scores three to three. Three to three. Nine Hawks baseball. 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 Nine Hawks baseball.
Seven, eight, and nine do up for the Nighthawks. So we go to the bottom of the sixth inning. Turner Maddox, Eli Garcia, and Seth Waltemeyer are, are due up Number five. against Michael Cardenas, the relief pitcher for TBC. So we close the book on starting pitcher Austin Bailey. Pitch four in the third innings. Allowed three runs, all earned. Five hits, five walks. So 10 reached base, had one strikeout. There's a big curve ball. Look, look good, ruled the ball. So Bailey kept the Nighthawks at bay, especially after the second inning. There's a fastball in there for a strike. Gave way after walking Seth Waltemeyer. Or no, I'm sorry, after walking Camp Tyson in the last inning. Here's a curveball outside. So four and a third innings. Cardenas came in with the one out, was able to strike out Bryce Bidding, and then Matt Williams grounded up to first base. And it's 3-1 count on Turner Maddox. And there's a, that one catches the outside corner, called strike. Full count now. And that's called strike three on the outside corner. So just, sometimes it's difficult to tell, you might as well swing because he'll call, he'll call it a strike one time and the next it'll be a ball, but. That time it was a strike. I should say the, those last two pitches were strikes. Probably were, but he's not been given that outside corner all night to the pitcher, but he did there. One out, and that'll bring up Eli Garcia. And there's a good pitch there, strike one. Altemeyer's on deck as now he goes back into the dugout, so we'll see. If he's just going to get some equipment or if he's going to be lifted, we're not sure. Good pitch there. Hit hard to the right side. Gets by the first baseman, Hickey. The pitcher is not over there covering, and that'll be – we'll see if it's ruled a hit or an error for Garcia. It was a hard hit ball. Hickey was there, bounced off his glove. Probably going to be an error. We'll see. Garcia was running, and uh, – Hickey might have been able to recover to get the out, but the pitcher, Cardenas, wasn't over there, so he had no one to throw to. And so there's a runner at first base is Garcia, and it will be Waltemeyer stays in to bat here and a big spot for Waltemeyer. And he hits that on the ground to second baseman, and there's a flip with a glove, and they get the double play. So Reeves fields a hard ground ball. Oh, wait, are they calling him safe at second? I think they're going to call him safe at second. So Reeves flipped it with his glove over to McGann at second. And now the coach for Trinity Baptist is going to come out and talk to the umpire. So I'm guessing they ruled him safe at second. And it must have been McGann not touching the base. And he threw over to first. Hickey was made a good play to stay on the base at first and that retires Waltemeyer for sure. We're going to we're going to see what what's happening here at second base. Going back to uh, Garcia's ball, that's going to be ruled a single. So his he reaches on a single. And then Waltemeyer hits into what looked like it was going to be a double play. Now they're talking to the home plate umpire, so we'll see what happens. See what the umpires decide here. Uh, if I would, I'm not sure what the ruling on the field was. If he ruled that he didn't touch the base, the shortstop, or what what the ruling might have been, it has to be that he didn't touch second base as he had the ball. So they're going to talk to the home plate umpire, and they're going to stay with the safe call. So Garcia advances to second base on the putout. So what Waltemeyer would essentially becomes a four-six-three. Put out for Waltemar. 
as the shortstop again apparently must have fielded the ball after he'd already crossed over second base. Cause it was kind of an awkward flip from Reeves, a very good play he made. It was a sharply hit ball. Reeves flipped it with his glove, but maybe that slight delay caused the timing to be off. Or maybe the fact that he flipped it with his glove and not with his hand, the timing was off just enough where McGann had, didn't touch second base um, and then threw the first. So it's two outs. And Case and Bowie, the leadoff batter, in a situation here where he could put the Nighthawks on top with a base hit. As Garcia has pretty good speed at second base. And there's. And there's a boot by the shortstop. Is he going to be able to get Bowie? No. Bowie legs it out. And so that's going to be an error on the shortstop, McGann. And Bowie's going to be down at first base on an error. So E6 puts Bowie at first and moves Garcia over to third. And Lawhon bats now with runners at first and third. And the first pitch is outside. So in the top of the inning, the Trinity Baptist went ahead and in a similar situation, first and third. They stole the runner from first to second. That ball's hitting the right. Fernandez is going to make the grab, though. Hard hit ball, but right to Fernandez, and that's going to retire the side. So the Nighthawks get a hit it was one error two runners left on base we played six complete with your score thomas university three trinity baptist college three you're watching nighthawks baseball on the thomas university broadcast network New pitcher for the Nighthawks is Jackson Smith, number 38. Smith is 6'1 freshman from Jennings, Florida, out of Hamilton County High School. Right-handed pitcher comes in in the top of the seventh inning in a seven-inning ball game. Smith is making his 13th appearance on the season, 23 complete innings. 12 strikeouts, opponents batting 380 against the righty. Has a one and two record, 2.0 whip and a 8.2 ERA. And his job here is to keep Trinity Baptist College at three runs and we'll try to walk this thing off in the bottom of the seventh. For Trinity Baptist, it'll be the top of the order. Jacob Burke, Dominic Gattinelli, and Gavin Williams do up. Looks like the Nighthawks have the same. But we have, uh, we might, it looks like we have a new right fielder. I'll have to check that. Let's see. Looks like Pickert's in left, Garcia in center, and uh, Hunter Kern is the new right fielder for the Nighthawks. So Kern replaces Case and Bowie. First pitch from Jackson Smith is a nice slider, strike one. So Hunter Kern, number 19, is out there in right field. And the, that ball is hit hard. Nice play over there by Waltemeyer. Makes the throw. 
So good range by Seth Waltemeyer to range over. I thought that was going to be a single up the middle. As he ranges over towards second, makes the play in the nice throw to first to retire Jacob Burke for the first out of the inning. So every out here is crucial when in a seven inning ball game tied three to three. And that ball's hit in the air to right center field. Who's going to catch it? Kern, the new right fielder, comes over and he calls off the center fielder Garcia and makes the grab. So quickly, two are out. And Gavin Williams, the designated hitter, is due up. All the scoring coming in the first two innings. Nighthawks score a run in the first inning and two in the second. Trinity Baptist scored all three in the top of the second inning. As Steptoe pitched three in the third inning and didn't allow any runs. Only two hits and four strikeouts for Steptoe. Odie Warren pitched one inning and his only blemish was a walk. And then Jackson Smith on here for the seventh, and he's retired the first two batters. And a fastball is called strike one to Gavin Williams. There's a swing and a miss, strike two. So Jackson Smith doing a good job going to work here, throwing nothing but strikes. And there's a ball wasted outside. Two two now. Williams has grounded out to the shortstop twice in this game and then hit a triple. That was the one that was hit over the center fielders. Head and he swings and misses a strikeout here to the end the top of the seventh. So the Nighthawks have a chance to walk it off in the bottom of the seventh. Three, four, five, due up. You're watching Nighthawks baseball on the Thomas University Broadcast Network. The new pitcher for Trinity Baptist College is number 31, Drew Billings. Comes in the game, bottom of the seventh, three to three. 
Billings, a sophomore, right-hander from Cartersville, Georgia, by way of Shorter University. Making his 12th appearance of the season. He'll face Max Pickard here to lead off the bottom of the seventh. So Billings has two saves on the season, 15 and two-thirds innings pitched, 19 strikeouts, four wins, three losses, and two saves. So he's pretty much factored in. Factored in. To quite a few of quite the wins and losses, wins and losses for Trinity Baptist. Trinity Baptist. 3.45 ERA and a 1.53 whip. There's a hard hit ball to left field, and that's in there for a base hit. Max Pickert, nice job hitting it to the opposite field. And he's at first base to lead off the bottom of the seventh. And that'll bring up Cam Tyson. And, well, this is an interesting decision for Coach Fleener how he's going to play this. Tyson has some pop on the bat. But the winning run is at first. And if you could, Coach Fleener sometimes likes to play to advance the runner and try to take his chances with the sack bunt. We'll see. And there is, and Tyson squares the bunt, pulls it back. Pitch looked outside, but was called a strike. And so now it's an 0-1 count. So there was no chance for him to bunt that, especially if he wants to bunt to the third baseman. Because it was at best on the outside corner. So he squares the bunt again, and and that was not a good bunt attempt by Cam Tyson. So this is something he's definitely not comfortable with by the looks of that one. And now he's in a hole 0-2. Does have one sack bunt on the season, but that one he kind of half swung, half bunted at and just fouled it off to the Thomas dugout. So now he'll be swinging away 0-2. And he swings and misses, and he goes down swinging. So that brings up Bryce Bidding, who hits from the left side against the right-handed pitcher, Drew Billing. Billings gives up the single to Pickard and then strikes out Cam Tyson after a couple of fun attempts. Matt Williams is in the on-deck circle. Bryce Bidding has three home runs on the season. Batting 292 coming into the game, 492 slugging percentage. That ball's hit on the ground to the second base side, fielded by Reeves. Retires bidding, but the runner, the winning run, does advance to second base on the 4 3 put out. And so it'd be up to Matt Williams who comes in and tries to walk it off of the Nighthawks, but he's. He's going to be batting against a tough right-hander because he, he throws that sidearm delivery, Billings does. And so it feels like it's coming from behind your back when you're batting from the right side. So a tough spot for Matt Williams, but if he can just find a way to get the ball in the outfield somewhere to drop in, Thomas will walk this game off. If not, we'll play extra innings. The first pitch is way inside, and so that makes it even tougher for a right-handed batter when it's Feels like it's coming from behind your back and it almost stays that way on a fastball. Misses Matt Williams. If he can get on base, turn Maddox bats from the left side and have a better chance. And that is a fastball that looked pretty good, but it's called a ball. So it's 2 0 now to Matt Williams. First base is open. I don't think Billings wants necessarily to put another runner on, but. A walk wouldn't be too bad for the Eagles in this situation. And there's a fastball right down the middle, strike one. Williams drew a walk back in the second and scored, then flew out to left field and grounded out to the first baseman. And 
And that pitch is way inside. 3-1. We'll see if Matt Williams looks to for a pitch to hit here and just win this game and or being ahead three and one. It's got to be the perfect pitch. And he hits it hard, but right at the second baseman, Reeves, who makes the play to retire the side. So sharply hit ball by Williams, but the right to the second baseman who makes the play to retire the side. So we've played seven. We'll go to extra innings. Your score it remains three to three. You're watching Nighthawks baseball on the Thomas University Broadcast Network. We go to extra innings here at Barnado Stadium, free baseball. And it'll be Jackson Smith back out there for the Nighthawks. He'll be going against the four, five, and six hitters for TBC as the Eagles try to salvage one game from the four game series, season series with the Nighthawks. And the Nighthawks trying for the sweep. One and zero pitch is fouled back. One and one. So Hickey was hit by a pitch to lead off the second inning on a 1-2 count. Struck out looking in the third inning and then walked in the fifth inning. So he's been on base. There's a ground ball to Waltmeyer, who double clutches and makes the throw for the first out of the inning. So Hickey now over two with, with a hit by pitch and a walk, and that brings up Jordan Fernandez, who also walked back in the second. And those two runs scored, those, the first two runs scored by TBC. Hickey hit by a pitch and Fernandez who walked. Both came around to score as they usually do if you do that. Allow the leadoff batter on. There's a good pitch by Jackson Smith, strike one. This is not Jordan Fernandez, so we have a pinch hitter. Let's see who that is, number 10. is Drew Gifford. And there's a swing and a foul tip, strike two. So Drew Gifford enters the game. Or no, sorry, this is number 10, Parker Laffrey. Parker Laffrey enters the game for Jordan Fernandez. And Laffrey fouls that out of play, stays 0-2. So Laffrey got the start in game one and was 0 for 3. And have pinch pinch hits here in game two. And there's a ball hit softly. And a nice effort by Maddox, but he's going to come up short. And that's going to be a single by Laffrey. So just a soft little Texas leaguer that Maddox laid out for. And was nearly caught up to. Would have been a spectacular play, but it was just out of his reach. And so Lavery's down to first base. And it'll be Collins Sepulveda, the hitter. Laffrey on the season 
leads the team in stolen bases with seven. And there's a pitch in the dirt, ball one. Only been thrown out one time this season. So I'm sure he'll be looking for a good pitch to, to go on. There's a fastball in there for a strike. Sepulveda bats, and then it's Musgrave on deck. The Nighthawks wouldn't mind a double play and let Musgrave maybe save his next at bat for his next game. If we can walk it off in the bottom of the eighth, but that's a lot of ifs. There's a big swing and a miss. One and two. Sepulveda hit a single back in the second inning and picked up an, R an RBI. There's a swing and a miss, strike three, throw down to first, not in time. So nice pitch by Jackson Smith to strike out Sepulveda. And now Jack Musgrave bats with two outs. Go ahead, run at first base. Runs are even at three, hits are even at six. Two errors by Trinity Baptist, none for the Nighthawks. Here's a fastball inside, ball one. Musgrave one for three in this game, single back in the fourth. There's a fastball in there for a strike. One and one. Here goes a runner. Fastball is outside. Good throw, but a little bit high. He's in there safe. Lahan's throw was a strong one, but it was high and unable to apply the tag on Laffrey. And so that'll be a stolen base. Pitch was outside, so it's two ball, one strike count. Now the go-ahead run is in scoring position. There's a big swing and a miss there on a pitch that would have been ball three. It's two two now. Ball's hit a mile in the air, it's gonna get out of play. The count remains two and two. Two two pitch high ball three. Seth Reeves is on deck. First base is open here for Smith. Full count is check swing fouled off to the right side and that was a good looking pitch. So Musgrave is fortunate I think to be able to check that one on. Uh, the ball hitting the bat on that one because it would, had he successfully checked a swing, I think it would have been called strike three. But his bat was out in the zone just enough where the ball hit it and went out of play. And so the count remains full. Here's the pitch, and that's in the dirt. Gets by the catcher, Lawhon. That's going to allow Laff Laffley to get the third. Musgrave advances the first, and he's going to be run for by Hoeing. 
Brandon Hoeing will be the runner at first, number one. So the go-ahead run is at third base. That's Parker Laffrey. The batter is Seth Reeves. And we'll see what Hoeing does at first base. The last time, again, in the situation, they stole on the first pitch and tried to induce a rundown. Nighthawks just gave them second base then. We'll see what they do now. Certainly don't want any ball thrown into center field. So I would imagine they would give them second base here again. And he doesn't go, though, and there's ball one outside. Swing and a miss. One ball, one strike. Reeves has walked, been on base a couple times on a fielder's choice and a walk. Also grounded out to shortstop. One one is fouled off and out of play. The runner was going on the pitch, so one ball, two strikes now. Yeah, I would expect him to be in motion again with two strikes on the batter and the thought being that the Nighthawks probably aren't going to try to throw it down anyway. And there he goes. Pitch is high. There's a fake throw. And again, they try to get into a rundown, but the Nighthawks aren't going to play that game. It's two, two and two now. As Hoeing is at second base. On another catcher indifference. And the 2 2 misses, ruled the ball a little bit outside. Nighthawks wanted that one. Probably too close to take. Close to take. Seth, Seth Reeves. Seth Reeves. He's given the benefit He's there now. Benefit there now. It's full count. Full two count. Outs. Two outs. 3-2, that's going to be called strike three. Nice pitch by Jackson Smith coming back to get him, and that'll end the threat. So the Eagles get a couple runners on base, leave them both stranded in scoring position. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Nighthawks three, Eagles three. You're watching Nighthawks baseball on the Thomas University Broadcast Network. Drew Billings back out there for the bottom of the eighth inning. And he'll be passing the 7-8, facing the 7-8-9 hole hitters for the Nighthawks, Turner Maddox, then Eli Garcia and Seth Waltemeyer. As it looks like uh, we might have a new left fielder, we'll have to check the number. Okay, so looks like Gatinella went to right field. He did. So he just turned his back. So Fernandez is probably going out there and left, but we'll check it. There's a fastball in the outside corner, strike one. Or, uh, yeah, it might be Laffrey. 
The one one pitch is outside. Two and one. Two one is low, ball three. So we're going to call that Parker Laffrey out in left field until we find out differently. I can't see his number there. And there's a ball four. So leadoff walk for the Nighthawks in the winning run is Turner Maddox at first base. So the TBC has uh, nice uniforms. They're blue with a yellow sleeve, short sleeve with the word letters TBC across the front but no number on the front. And so in order to get a number for a player, they have to do you the favor of turning around. And the left fielder is not doing us that favor. I think it's Parker Laffrey though, because the Fernandez exited the game and Gattinello looks like he's in right field. But Garcia squares the bunt and he bunts it foul. So again, the Nighthawks trying to sack the runner over this time with more experienced more experience experienced butter and we have a courtesy our pinch runner at first base is Gabe Tafelski running now for Turner Maddox. So Tafelski down at first and Garcia probably bunting again. He does square early. There's a throw over to first. Garcia has one sack bunt credited to him so far this season. But he tried one in game one. And, or no, that wasn't him. That it was a, yes, he tried the one earlier in this game, actually, and got a base hit out of it. So he wasn't credited with the sack bunt then because he got a hit. But now he's 0-2, so I don't think he'll be bunting here. So that was a hit that he got in the back in the second inning. Also singled in the fifth, sixth inning. So two for three. But now he's only working with one strike as he prepares to bat against the right-handed pitcher Drew Billings, who's a sidearm pitcher. Now he's going to square again. So interesting take here as it looks like Garcia is going to go ahead and try to sack bunt even with two strikes. As they try to set the table for Seth Waltemeyer, who's in the on-deck circle. Here's he squaring the bunt, and that's going to be pulled back. There's a stolen base, though. So forget about the bunt. We have, a, we have the winning run at second base already. Tafelski steals second base. As Musgrave... Had trouble getting a handle on the ball to throw down there. And maybe the bunt was just a decoy. And either way, the Thomas was going to try to get the second base, either on a maybe a, a, a bunt and miss or a successful bunt. Either way, they were going to get a runner at second. And there's Garcia fouling it off to stay alive. One ball, two strikes. So just takes a single here. Tafelski's got some speed. He's a second base. Nobody out. So the Nighthawks are poised to hopefully make something happen here in the bottom of the eighth. Billings is a tough pitcher from the right side, though, and it's going to be a tough spot for Garcia. And then we have another right-handed batter on deck. And that is fouled off again by Garcia, so nice job there. The ball kind of appears out of nowhere when you have a sidearm deliverer. And you're batting from the right side. So Garcia, great job here, fouling a couple off and staying alive. And now we just try to get something out in the outfield somewhere. Center fielder Burke is way in, so if it's a, if it's a single to center, we might not see Tafelski score. To right or left, I think we would. Here's a ball hit hard. 
but foul to the right side. So Garcia is starting to catch up and see the ball a little bit better against the sidearm hurler for TBC. That was solid contact there, and I think he's timed it up now. The one-two pitch. That's, again, hit hard to the right side. That barely over the roof of the Thomas dugout. And so what a battle Eli Garcia is having here with Drew Billings. After unsuccessful bunt attempts on the first two pitches, and I guess you could say the third pitch too as he, with two strikes, squared the bunt but took a, took a ball. And that's the lone ball in the count. Everything else has been fouled off. One ball, two strikes. Here's the pitch. That one came over the top. So Billings changed his delivery there, and he wanted that pitch. It looked pretty good from here, too. As that must have, I think, threw off Eli Garcia's. He did not come sidearm on that one. He came straight over the top, and it looked like a pretty good pitch, but maybe fooled the umpire as well with his change in delivery. So now he's back to the sidearm, and Garcia fouls it off again. Two balls and two strikes, and Billings is showing a little frustration of not being able to get pesky Eli Garcia out here. As he's thrown some pretty good pitches, and Garcia continues to foul off. Two balls, two strikes. And there's a base hit up the middle. Tefelski got a late jump. He's going to send him, though. Here comes Tefelski around third. He's going to make it. The ball's all the way to the fence. Eli Garcia with a walk-off double as the ball goes all the way to the fence. And the Nighthawks stream out of the dugout to chase Garcia. What an at-bat from Eli Garcia as he is able to fight off a number of pitches, then drills it to right field. And the Nighthawks walk it off, and they're celebrating out in left field as they chase Eli Garcia all the way to the left field fence with water jugs in hand. And now a couple of the Nighthawks are grabbing him, slowing him down, and there goes the water on top of him in deep left field as Eli Garcia wins the game for the Nighthawks with a walk-off double to the right center field. Tefelski had to hold up just for a brief second because it was a line drive. The, inf- the outfielders were playing a little bit in, and that allowed the ball to get all the way to the fence as it was a, just a line shot over the second baseman's head. So Tefelski held up just a second to make sure it got over the second baseman's head, Reeves. When it did, he turned and ran, and I saw Coach Reed sending him home. And when I looked up again, the ball was all the way to the fence, so easily scores, and the Nighthawks win. What a ball game here. We go eight innings. Nighthawks walk it off in the bottom of the eighth, four to three, and sweep the four-game series from Trinity Baptist Eagles. But these two games here in, Jackson, in, Tom, in Thomasville were a lot closer than the two in Jacksonville as the Nighthawks uh, won those two handily. But these two were a little bit closer, 5-1 to one in game one and 4-3 fi- and to three in game two on a walk-off extra inning base hit by Elar Gar- Garcia. So the winning pitcher for the Nighthawks is going to be Jackson Smith. Jackson Smith comes in for the, for the Nighthawks and pitches the, two innings, pitches uh, – the seventh inning and the eighth inning, and he'll get the get the victory for the Nighthawks. Only allowed one hits to, to Jackson Smith. No runs, three strikeouts, and a walk. So great job for Jackson Smith. He'll pick up the win. Drew Billings threw well through uh, one inning, allowed the uh, game, game-winning run to score on, on that base hit. So he allows one run. It was earned. Andrew Austin Bailey started the game for the Eagles. He pitched four in the third innings. Gave up three runs, all earned, and had one strikeout and five walks. Then he was relieved by Michael Cardenas through an inning of two-thirds, allowed no hits, no runs, and no walks, two strikeouts for Cardenas. So nice job for number 18 for the Eagles. Then Drew Billings came in, the right-handed sidearm, side armor, and got locked into a battle with Eli Garcia, who delivered the game-winning hit. For the Nighthawks on the mound, it was Nick Brady who started 
breezed through the first inning, one, two, three, retired them, then got into trouble in the second inning after a hit batter and a walk. Ended up allowing three runs to score in that inning after two walks and a hit batter and a couple of hits. He was relieved by Gavin Steptoe, who gets that out and then pitches the next three innings, allowing no runs, only two hits, four strikeouts for Gavin Steptoe. Then Sam Odeorn came in and pitched a perfect or an inning, allowed one walk, didn't allow any runs. And then Jackson Smith took over in the top of the seventh, pitched the last two innings with uh, no runs allowed and only one hit allowed. So Jackson Smith gets the win, Drew Billings loss, and the Nighthawks are victorious in both games of the doubleheader. Uh, hitting heroes for the Nighthawks, Garcia ends up getting three hits on the day. So he tried to sack bunt back in the second, got a hit on that. And then in the sixth inning, he knocked a single. And then here in the bottom of the eighth, it's a game-winning walk-off single. So the offensive star is Garcia, three hits. Pickard had two hits on the day, an RBI. Lawhon gets an RBI. Uh, of course, Garcia gets the RBI. And also Waltemeyer picked up an RBI on the day. So all in all, seven hits for the Nighthawks, six for the Eagles. But the most important number, four runs for Thomas and just three for TBC. So the next game for the Nighthawks is this Friday. We play a a doubleheader against University of Mobile. The first game on Friday is scheduled to begin at 1 o'clock. So if you don't have plans for Friday afternoon, come on out and watch the baseball. It's a critical series for the Nighthawks as they're trying to secure a spot in the conference tournament. And any wins they can get over the University of Mobile are going to be critical. And they'll start with two games on Friday and hopefully pick up two wins if we can. So that starts at 1 o'clock here at Varnado Stadium in Thomasville, Georgia. I uh, want to thank the crew here in the press box and everybody who helped out, all the students who were running the show the show here. I really appreciate their help, uh, along with Ronnie keeping the score here and Zach on the music and John doing the scoreboard. really appreciate everyone's help. Until Friday, this is Andrew Brady saying good night, everyone. Thomas 4, TBC 3, you have been watching Nighthawks Baseball on the Thomas University Broadcast Network. Good night.